the beginning has kind of told you what it is in terms of a lot of the male artists. And I think women, just their presence in hip hop pushes back against that. Women played a major role in the, all four aspects of hip hop culture, graffiti, breakdancing, DJing, and MCing. Um, there is no hip hop without women. I think what women contribute to hip hop is uh, a different perspective and diversity. I feel that we contribute that balance. To be honest with you, hip hop for me, it actually, and this might sound a little unbelievable, but it's true, it really saved my life. And when I got involved in hip hop, that became my outlet. What inspired me to become a rapper was the way music made me feel. Music made me feel like there wasn't a care. It took you to a time and space and place in your life. After I decided, you know, I just started really rapping, like almost every day, like I had like a schedule. Like I would work at nine, I would get up like at six in the morning and at least write like a song or listen to a beat or something before I went to work. When I got home, before I went to sleep, and made sure I wrote something before I went to bed. I was just a writer. I was writing battle raps, you know, I was, I was ready for lunch and recess to come, you know, to go and battle the guys. Um, and it just became, it, you know, I, I never thought I'd become famous. It just became um, another passion of mine. You yes, we are back. Deep inside the second hour of Issues and Answers Friday, My Country with Scott Cannon. Here we are. 7.40 p.m. That means in about 20 minutes, I got to get on out of here before Dr. Williams comes in with the 2 by 4 and starts regulating. So it is time to do work. If you got a, if you got something to say, you got a comment, yay, nay, give me, give me a call. Let me know. 219-885-1371. That number again, 219-885-1371. Uh, right there, you just heard a lot of women in hip hop talking about what inspired them to get involved in hip hop. Obviously, we cannot celebrate the 50th anniversary of hip hop without talking about women and their place in hip hop. Um, from the very beginning, women have been involved. From the very beginning. Uh, it was Cindy Campbell, who was uh, Clive Campbell, who's better known as Cool Herc, uh, his sister who, who uh, urged him, I guess, to, to uh, throw the party so that they could get some school clothes back in on August 11th, 1973. So very, from some, some from the very beginning, uh, women have been partners in hip hop. A lot of people don't know this, but Angie Stone, the great R and B soul singer, uh, Angie Stone was one of the very first female rappers uh, with a group called the Sequence back in the late seventies, early eighties. The very first woman to be on TV, the very first female rapper. Hell, the first rappers to appear on TV, period, were the Funky 4 Plus 1. And they had Sha Rock with them, who was uh, the female in the group. Always held her own with all the guys in the group. Uh, throughout the 80s, you had people like Roxanne Shante, who was known for battling men as a little girl. She was 13 or 14 years old, battling grown men and disposing of them like it was nothing. That was her claim to fame, that she was a great battle rapper. Actually, she ended up going to college and becoming a doctor. <laughs> yeah, so good for her. She got her record company. I think her mother actually uh, got some sort of stipulation in the, in the, her record contract that the record company had to send her to college. And they did, and she became a doctor. So she's now Dr. Roxanne Shante. So good for her. But she was a very big pioneer in hip hop in the early days. Uh, Queen Latifah, who for my money is the greatest female MC of all time. MC Light, one of the great MCs of all time. Miss Melody from Boogie Down Productions. Salt and Pepper, pioneers in women em empowerment uh, in the 80s and 90s. Nikki D, Bahamadia, Yo Yo, who you heard in the video there. Boss, DeBrat, so many women played a role in hip hop. Uh, Hip-hop at, at one point, you know, uh, 
was sort of was kind of coming off as a sausage fest and these women all sort of you know acted as a counterbalance and i've always said that women that hip hop can't be what it needs to be until women's place in it is what it needs to be and you know it's funny how everything in, in this show always intersects right because I always talk about politicians. I always talk about the horrible decisions our politicians make that have adverse, um, have adverse uh, consequences for all of us, but also corporations. Uh, women in hip hop went from being co-partners, co-creators, sort of equal partners in hip hop, to being just sort of vixens at some point in the mid to late nineties. And a lot of that was driven by that, 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 that corporations, the other big villain <laughs> in, uh, my country with Scott Cannon is always the government and corporations fault because it always is the government and corporations fault. It is. It's absolutely their fault. And so we went from empowered women like Lauryn Hill, like Queen Latifah, like Roxanne Shante, MC Light, who, who did social consciousness, who did, even if they were going to do hardcore stuff, they were going to do it as empowered women with agency and fully in control of what they were doing and not be just eye candy or not just be there for men to lust after or men to discard whenever they wanted. In the mid 90s, once corporations started to really take hold of hip hop, thanks to another great villain of this show, the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which I think I've mentioned about three times already, you started to see the place of women change in hip hop. And not just in hip hop, in popular music, period. Think about it. How many pop stars and female rap stars have you seen the last 30 years who are not overly sexualized think about it there's very few very few i remember growing up in the 90s here in gary uh, a lot of times my mother would take me to school at emerson she would always uh, complain that she couldn't tell the girls from the boys because <laughs> the girls were wearing Air Jordans just like the dudes were. So uh, they were wearing jerseys, football jerseys. You look at Aaliyah, you look at early Lauryn Hill, you look at Queen Latifah, you look like MC Light. There were a lot of tomboys in hip hop in the 80s and 90s. But once you let corporate America get your hands on anything, they have to sex it up. And they've spent the last 30 years transforming virtually all female artists, not just in hip hop, but virtually all female artists into hyper sexualized bimbo feminists. You know, that's virtually all of them now. Britney Spears, she could work at a strip club. Okay, Megan Thee Stallion. Hell, Cardi B actually worked at a strip club. She was an actual stripper. You know, Christina Aguilera for, you know, Taylor Swift is out there with her, her goodies out. Beyonce, uh, Rihanna. Uh, how many female artists do you see that are not overly sexualized in this day and age? It is very few. Very, very few at this point. And it's sad to say, um, but that's sort of the way that popular culture has gone since the Telecommunications Act of 96 put the hand, put the control of music away from independent companies and from lots of diverse media ownership to a few large corporations that maximize profits, minimize risk. They reduce everything to its base. And that's what they've done.
they've reduced it they've reduced hip hop and and all music and all culture to its base that's why hollywood keeps making the same few movies over and over again aren't you sick of seeing the same superhero movies over and over again i know i am that's why i don't watch hollywood movies that often <coughs> But if there's one thing I want you guys to always be able to get out of my country with Scott Cannon and Issues and Answers Friday is that the things that our politicians do have real consequences in every single facet of our society. Music, movies, TV, politics, obviously, um, the air we breathe, the water we drink, the clothes we're wearing, the price of gas. All of it goes back to the decisions made by our politicians and their corporate overlords. And the direction that hip hop has gone in is no different. Obviously, well, I got to get I got less than 10 minutes. Obviously, I can't get out of here without talking about the deaths of Tupac and Biggie in the in 1996 and 1997, which were very much uh pretty much a, a delineation point at that point there's pretty much hip-hop before tupac and biggie died and there's two uh, hip-hop after tupac and biggie died i played the clip from tupac earlier where he's talking about poverty uh tupac was somebody who was a very political person he was raised by panthers whether he was doing hardcore rap or whether he was doing political rap he always kept that same heart of that mentality that that steely mentality that he got from that, Biggie was somebody who, you know, got involved with obviously some wrong people as well. Um, and it, it changed uh, America. I, I blame a lot of the media for that as well. Purposely sensationalizing things that should not have been sensationalized. Um, we have to talk about the mass commercialization of hip hop. A black art form from the inner cities of America, which is basically run from corporate boardrooms at this point, and the effect that that has had on the culture and on society. Uh, again, corporations run and control every facet of our lives at this point. Hip hop is no different. Uh, before I get out of here, uh, I have to address uh, one of the products of the mass commercialization of hip hop and the sort of proliferation of hip hop as a worldwide phenomenon, and that is Eminem, a white man who is the best selling rapper of all time at this point, and it's not even close. I think he's uh, at about 300 million albums sold. At one point, he was the best selling artist of the 21st century. I, I don't know if I don't know some people like Adele and Beyonce and Taylor Swift should be somewhere in his orbit at this point. But at one point it was him by and large. But because hip hop's audience is no longer black people. And we talked about this some weeks ago when we addressed this hip hop's audience is no longer black people. It is. People from all over the world. And so. You know, this uh, white guy's been able to take advantage of that and, and definitely, you know, use his talent, his skills, very talented and skilled individual. But, you know, a lot of the popularity that comes from being non-black in a black art form, he's uh, definitely uh, made good of that. We have to talk about the rise of strip club rap, of the decadence, of the excess. Again, these are products of commercialization these are products of commercialization and uh, so it's important to understand in everything we do we have to find the root cause behind how things get to be the way they are the powers that be want you to look at your neighbor they want you to blame the kids down the street they want you to blame the kids in the ghetto they want you to blame your neighbor for the the things that whatever you have a problem with when usually the same the issues are almost always caused by the same people
you know, the government and their corporate overlords. And so at 50 years old, hip hop's at a turning point. It was at one point the voice of young black America. Now it is the voice of the world's youth, the biggest genre of music, the most popular culture on the planet, Japan, England, France, Germany, North America, South America, Africa, the Middle East, everywhere you go, people are rapping, people are singing. You got a bunch of Koreans now. <laughs> rapping and singing and dancing like they're uh, from Harlem. Um, it's important to understand that hip hop has brought people together in many ways, but it has also been used by corporations to exploit the black community and our trauma. And so, you know, I'm still trying to figure out the answer to that. How do we, how do we take things like hip hop back? How do we take rock and roll back? We invented rock and roll too. How do we take, how do we take the blues back? How do we take all the things that we've created over the years back once they are overly commercialized, once they are taken away from us, once other people get to commodify and water it down and turn it into something else? I'm not 100% sure. But you better believe I'm going to keep looking for answers because I respect you that much. I respect this audience that much that I'm going to keep doing my research. I'm going to keep putting together shows every Friday that delve deep into the root causes of the problems in our society. Whether it's the gas prices, whether it's the inflation. Hopefully next week I'll be able to get into um, what's going on in Africa. And how Joe Biden and our government has screwed things up there <laughs> to the point where West Africans are now uh, fully, fully supporting Russia and in bed with China. We'll definitely have to talk about that. 